Welcome back. This week, uh, today, actually getting out of the quarantine uh, for direct contact there uh, at work. So, kind of foiled some fall plans and everything, but it was productive. Got a pile of flies tied and everything. But uh, I'll be honest, this is probably the longest my hair's been in probably 15 years. I feel like I'm in one of the damn Beatles or something. It's it's uh, it's getting out of control. So be glad to get back to a normal human being here tomorrow uh, whenever that uh, finally rolls around but today we're going to tie uh, Kelly Gallup's big hole bug this is uh, you know typically used for a jig style retrieve um, but it's also versatile in the fact that you can use it on a jerk strip or you know a strip pause whatever it may be um, but we're going to go ahead and tie this one today uh, go through a little bit of the differences from um, the last time that I tied it on the video prior uh, with just a single single camera angle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with just a thread base here and this is a Daiichi or a uh, MFC 7050 size 4 now, if you want, you can use the Daiichi 20s, uh, 2460s or 2461s. They're a comparable hook, pretty close to what this one is. But what we're going to do with this back hook is we're going to stack just three plumes of marabou. Well, it's actually going to be six, but uh, three plumes of sunburst yellow and then three plumes of, uh, of brown on the top to make a distinct two-tone tail. So I just want to set this uh, sunburst pack out, and when I go selecting these, um, I want to start with a pretty sparse section, or with a pretty sparse feather, and then as I go, I want to build this, I want a little bit more fluff, if you will, as I go to the front of the hook. So I'm looking for something that has just a little, it's just a little bit bulkier. Um, that one looked decent. I don't know if I'm gonna use it or not. Uh, let me see here. I know we can get a better one out of this somewhere. That's almost like a bully bugger plume right there. I'll keep that one for my front. And then I want to find an alternate for my middle one here just because I didn't like that one too awful much. This pack's pretty busted up, so it may be a little difficult to find exactly what I'm after. Yeah, boy, this stuff's really beat up. Let's see here. Looks like we may just wind up going with what we have. My goodness, this is a rough pack. Um, well, we're going to make what we have work for us there without going through that entire ounce pack there. So, I got those three set to the side. Get the marabou out of the back camera there. Got those three set to the side, and we're going to let those sit as they are, and then we're going to find three brown as well. Starting off sparse and then building thicker as we go. So that's a pretty sparse, that's too sparse. There's a good one. Um, let me see here. That's a decent back. Then I want to find a nice thick one for the front. What I'm looking at on this is mainly just the tips. Um, like something like this, never be able to use. It's just garbage. Use that for building brushes or whatever it may be. That's going to be a decent 
front piece right there. It's it's nice and thick, and I'll I'll pick two of these up and compare and contrast them here in a minute. That way you have an idea of what we're looking at. But this one here is going to be in in my right hand is going to be really sparse. Get a better look there. And then this one in my left, you can see it's just webbier throughout the body. The tips are a little webbier as well. We'll be able to build some bulk out of that as we go through. And it'll just progress as we go from the back to the front of the hook. And let me get this cleared out again. Oh, I didn't think that one through. Threw the material off the bench. Anyhow, we're pretty clear on this now, so what we're going to do is start building the body on this one. And I'm going to start with my most sparse yellow that I have, or sunburst that I have. And I'm going to go with this one right here. And I'm just going to peel this off to the side. I'm going to take a decent amount, and then I want to get rid of that. Now you can do this one of two ways really. You can, you can build this as you do a typical tail and go one sitting back like this tail out of there, and then stack it all the way through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the bottom on this one and I'm just going to split this hook right down through. I want to start on the bottom and just get a nice build right through this. That way it's gonna be a little bit easier to show that distinct back section. And then before I go any further, I wanna take probably three strands of copper flashaboo, this is holographic. piece on there. So we're going to go with about three strands here. And then I'm going to take and double this up. So we're going to have roughly six. You can you can um, add or subtract as you see fit on the flash. That's up to you however much you want in it. But I'm going to add about six strands of flash through this. And then it's going to be you know six on each side. I'm just going to double these up, run it back a length, and then peel this back, and I want to cut that short of the tail. That way you can see there's just that little bit of internal flash sitting right there. Now I'm going to go into my brown, and this is where we're going to start stacking the tail. This one looks pretty good for a back piece right there. So now, I'm going to take and just measure this out, same distance as the sunburst, and I just want to stack on this. We got roughly the same length right there, and I want to go one, two, just capture that, and then I want to work this forward, just like so to my halfway point. Now if you want to, you can put some, you can put some dubbing, um, you can put whatever you want uh, as a body on there. For If you pick marabou that's, that's thick enough like we did on this one, uh, because we're stacking it and we're going to work this to the back, um, we're not going to have any, any hook showing, but like I said, if you want to, if you've got some, some, uh, more sparse marabou, you could throw body material in there, chenille, whatever it may be, um, but that, that's up to you. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold this up for, con for uh, a color contrast. As you can see, I have the yellow going half to three quarters of the way back, the brown, and then I'm just gonna flip that right around and tie this into place. Just get some nice capture wraps right there hold that back you can see where we have a nice stack right there and then I'm just working this right to the front I'm going to stop just short of the eye 
tie this off and then go ahead and trim that yellow. So we got things sitting how we want it right there. I'm just gonna clean that up with a few thread wraps, bring this to the front, peel that down some, and then just bring that back. Now we're gonna go with the same thing over the top on the brown. And for this, I'll take a little bit more material than I typically do. Like if I were just doing a tail, I would probably have about that much right there for just a straight marabou tail on the back. But as you can see on this, I'm gonna take probably another half inch of material and just peel this all back. And uh, I'm gonna use this in my stack. So same thing, I want the same length on the browns I had on the yellow. And I'm just gonna roll my fingers down slightly, just like that. I'm gonna go one, two, and what that does is it's gonna push that marabou around your hook a little bit, and it's gonna add some, it's gonna add the surface area that you're, that you're affecting essentially on this back hook, and it's gonna cover up any gaps that you may have So then same thing, just gonna advance that right to the front. And then we're gonna tie in our last stack of sunburst and brown. Like I said before, this is where you want your heavier, uh, more thick, webbier, whichever adjective you wanna use. Um, plumes of marabou. So I'm gonna just peel that back, wet that down so it's a little easier to manage there. And then once again, half to three quarters of the way back, just spin that around. And then I'm just gonna trim that off so it's a little cleaner to tie in because I'm using some extra material. And one, two capture wraps. Just clean this up a little bit. Have that marabou going right down, and as that dries out, it's gonna, it's really gonna fluff out a lot for the appearance on this back section, and you're not gonna see, you know, it's really gonna fill out um, on that back hook. I think I had two or three thoughts going at once there, and probably didn't convey one of them right, but. What can you do? All right, last piece here. We're gonna take this, and nothing new on this. Like I said, this is your your thickest or your webbiest plume of marabou right here. Measure that out against the rest of them, and I'm just gonna wet that once again, and then cut that off. Bring this back just a touch, and then a nice clean tie-in right there. Just form that head a little bit. I'm not worried about that one little brown piece of marabou coming through. Get that whip finished everything's good to go and you can see we have a pretty clean section right there it just looks you know without even having a body in there at all without any material for the body we've got a nice clean section um, everything's filled out really nice we don't have uh, any hook showing and we've got a nice two-toned um, back section right there so now what I want to do, yeah, this will work. Just gonna take a marker and tone this down a little bit. Everything looks pretty clean right there. Then I'm gonna take a piece of wire 
if I can pick it up off the bench here. Piece of wire, and then I just want one bead. I'm gonna use red on this, but really you can use whichever color you want. It's entirely up to you. That bead will, eh, yeah, that'll do. It's a little chewed up, but it'll work. All right, so we'll get that, set that off to the side. My damn fly's driving me nuts. And then we're gonna go into our front hook here. The front hook that I'm gonna use for this one, it's a little bit of a different shape. Get that in the vise there. This is a Daiichi 1550, size two. You can see the shape there. If I turn it around that way, you can see the shape that it has. Um, just a little bit different. It, it's no different really than a 3X long. It has a little bit um, wider of an opening for the gap, for the hook gap and everything. Um, but still a 3X long. Um, if you want to use just a straight, uh, you know, 7050 like we did for the back, you can go either a 4 or a 2 with it, whatever you decide. Uh, let's see here. So, first thing I'm going to do on this those damn eyes out of my mouth so I can talk. Bad habit. I'm just gonna build a thread base here. I'm gonna go back to the ascent of the barb of the hook and then I'm just gonna work this back through. Grab my eyes and make sure you leave enough room because we're gonna have a chenille head here or a cactus chenille, whatever, whatever body you decide to use. I think I got cactus chenille for, for this body. So make sure you have enough room to get that on. To get one to two turns. Um, well, probably two turns is what you're going to want for the head on that. And we've got plenty of room there in the front. You can see we've got probably, we got enough room for probably two, two and a half turns of chenille. Now I'm going to take just a little bit of zap here, touch these eyes up or touch the thread wraps up like I always do just to secure them in place a little bit more. Get a few good wraps, figure eight around those eyes. You'll see that glue moving around a little bit. and then really wrench down on these, really sink that thread into the glue. Um, and then as that dries, those things are gonna be locked pretty solid. I swear if I catch that damn thing, he's dead. Oh, I can see him through the corner of my eye there as I'm tying, and I'm sure he's messing up that back camera angle pretty good. Anyhow, I'm trying not to get too distracted by that. So now we're gonna set in our back hook. I got a couple of wraps that are a little too heavy right there. We're setting in our back hook. We're gonna have about the same gap as the width of our bead right there. And then I just want a few wraps around that, make sure that everything's going the direction that I want it not kicked off to one side or another. I'm going to make one wrap around that just secures my hook just a little bit more. It keeps, if you watch the one time tips, I think it does a lot for reducing kinks in the, in the back hook when you get one of those pesky rainbows eating on the back. So now we'll take and just double over our wire. I got it a little bit long on this one. So I'm going to take some old scissors here and I'm just going to get rid of that. Shorten that up a little bit. And then before we go into tying any more material, we're going to build a skirt out of the marabou that we used already. Get some good secure wraps on that. And I'm just going to follow the color that uh, that we have built on the back. We 
we're just going to follow that color combination all the way back. So I'm going to take one piece of yellow marabou here. Just going to wet that down, bust off those tips just slightly. Not to where it's too blunt up in the front. You can see there's a nice little section right there. And then I want to angle that down toward the uh, toward that back section. Let me turn that. You know, can't really get it too well in the back camera. Once I get it tied in, I'll I'll get a better look without my fat fingers in the way. Just go ahead and work that to the back. Take this right up to where you cut your wire short. That way you're going to have a nice clean transition. You're going to have a nice smooth body all the way up. You can see that a little bit better right there, how I have that yellow coming into the yellow from the back. And it's going to make a nice clean skirt as we press forward on this one. Same thing, I'm just going to take the opposite side of the yellow marabou. And then I just want to even these tips up just slightly. So I'm just going to take this, I'm going to pinch it with my finger and then pull that. And like I said, it's not real blunt. It has a, it's not a real sharp, um, like blocky feather. If I brought it back here closer to the base and busted those off, it would be a lot more uh, apparent. There's still a nice little taper right there. And that's really what I'm after, but it would be a lot bulkier if I went more toward the back. So I'm just gonna measure that out against the one that I have tied in already and get that tied in place. Once again, I'm just gonna take that right up to where my wire ended, where I doubled it up and clean that up with a few thread wraps and then find a good piece of brown here to go over the top. I didn't really like any of them. This one looks a little better. It's, it's nice and webby. Um, it's gonna make a nice full top section for this skirt. And you'll see when we get this tied in, it's gonna be a nice transition going to that back section. This one I want just to be a little bit more blunt or a little more squared off. I want it to be a little bit heavier because I'm only using the one feather. And then it's going to go the same distance back that I have the yellow. So get that tied in. And then just make some nice clean wraps. I'm going to cut this at an angle and then run that up and that way it's going to ease out my transition a little bit. All right, there you can see the nice skirt section that we have right there. It fills that back section out pretty well. Um, if you want to just run brown down the sides, you can. Um, whatever, whatever you like better. I mean, I typically try and stay with the same color combination. Um, you know throughout the entire or throughout that skirt and running into the back but it's up to you if you just want to build a quick skirt two browns on the side if you don't want a skirt at all i don't really recommend it it's going to look a little bit lost but um it that's up to you however you however you like your fly to look but uh this is the way that i build mine right here so that's what we're going to go with on this one now there's another decision to make um we're going to tie in two sets of two for rubber legs. We're going to have one closer to the back and then one just right behind the eyes. And then we're going to have a cactus chenille body and some uh, saddle hackle to, to fill the fly out. This is where, you know, there, there's some different ways that you can do this. Um, I'm going to wrap this with a, a counter wrap with a rib, so I'm going to take some small brassy wire. Um, it's an extra step, it's a little bit more to work around when it comes to 
uh, going around your rubber legs and everything, it gets a little bit uh, uh, crowded on there, but it secures your fly up a little bit more. And uh, you know, you won't wind up with a tooth in, uh, in uh, your saddle hackle and then having it unravel on you. So what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of extra security and you can see I took a pretty lengthy piece of uh, of wire here. I just want enough to work with. I want to be able to keep my hand away from all of the materials that are going to be in here. But if you want to, you could tie your hackle in right here and then just run it through after the fact. But I'm going to work mine from the front back. So now we're going to go into some rubber legs. This is just pumpkin uh, orange and yellow. It's a neat little color combination that mixes well with the sunburst and brown. Um, not a hard and fast rule on what color you should be using or whatever it may be. Just whatever looks good to you. So I'm going to use these ones right here. I'm going to just set those off to the side. Like I said, we're going with two sets of two. get those out of the way there and then I'm gonna work this through before I tie these in actually it's gonna be a lot easier when I tie this in if I could just go with this uh, if I tie my body material in right now so this is a root beer uh, medium cactus chenille and I just want to pick some of this stuff out I want to get some of that material out of the way so I'm just tying in the cotton there we go. You can see I got the two strands right there. There we go. It's showing up pretty well. I got the two strands. All I want to do is tie in that cotton piece. And that's all. That's going to reduce bulk. It's going to... You're not going to have a bump in the back on this fly when you tie that in. So now I'm going to tie in these rubber legs. And like I said, you're going to have one set in the back. And we're just going to figure eight right over the top of that. Make sure that your legs are hanging straight down. you got a nice X over the top. Get one or two more wraps in the front of it. Just pull that down. And then I'm going to go right behind the eyes with this second set. Get that out of the way for now. And then I want to throw in this second set, like I said, right behind the eyes. I didn't like how that one was sitting there. And then I'm going to go one, get out of there. I should really have a straw over the top of that. It would make this easier, but I'm just going to fight it. And two, there we go. Even if it's not tied in perfectly, you have two nice loose wraps on that. And you can see I just manipulated that just a little bit and it's sitting exactly how I want it right now. Let me move that forward. There we go. It's sitting exactly how I want it. It's sitting exactly how the last one is. And then I'm just gonna go same as before, one, two wraps, pull that down tight. And that's gonna really lock in your uh, your legs into place they're not going to be moving on you so now here comes the tricky part well one of the tricky parts i need to half hitch this first just get that set into place i'm going to bring the cradle around and it would probably be easiest if you didn't use the rotary function on this one if you just cut this cactus chenille to length and then just wrapped it around manually. It would probably be a little bit easier, but what I'm gonna do to help assist on that a little bit is I'm gonna take just a clip right here. I'm gonna pull all of this stuff forward for now and just let that sit right there. If I have to, I'll uh, I'll move these things around as needed. Oh. Or I'll cut this to length. 
how in the hell did that happen? I'll cut this to length and just wrap this manually. It's probably going to be a little bit easier to be honest with you. But I'm going to try and fight through this and struggle through it because I'm stubborn. So there we go. It's sitting pretty good, sitting about how we want it so far. And you can see I'm taking that I'm taking that cactus chenille right up to the legs to where it's actually bumping them forward slightly. And then I'm going to make one wrap right in front of it, make sure that my hand's out of the way. And I'm just working this real slow right through here. I've got one wrap to go and then I'm going to be right at my eyes. Make another wrap through that. That's sitting clean, sitting how we want it. And then I'm going to go just figure eight right around these eyes. I'm going to make one more in the back just to clean that up a little bit. And then I'm going to figure eight over the top again. Make sure that I'm, I still have good visibility on my eyes. Everything's nice and clean through that top right there. And then I'm just going to go one and two right in the front. I got a two turn wrap on that. The head's filled out really nice. I still have some room to tie in my hackle. And then let me just peel this stuff back a little bit. I don't want a ton of bulk through here. Let me get another wrap or two. I don't want to create a ton of bulk. So as I'm doing this, what I'm going to do is just peel this back just like when I tied it in to where I have some cotton exposed and I'm not going to have a ton of material that I have to fill out or that I have to cover up. And it's not going to create a big bump right there. So there we go. We navigated through that pretty well. You can see this back section right here. Let me get my legs. Bring that back around. You can see the back sections really starting to fill out. We've got our legs sitting how we want them. Everything's nice and clean on that. They're both hanging just straight down. And I'm not going to cut those just yet. I'm going to keep those intact. And I'm just going to clean that head up a little bit. And then this is going to be the last material that we tie in. This is an olive brown uh, rooster saddle. I'm going to find a nice thick piece on this. Preferably something. That one looks pretty good right there, actually. I want something to where I can get some of this, these longer fibers in right here. Some of this aftershaft and everything. So I'm just going to tie I'm going to peel that back to where I have a little bit of that bulkier material sitting right there and then I'm going to tie this in. I'm going to block the back camera because I want to get this in exactly how I want it. Everything looks good there. I just need to trim just a little piece like so. Clean that head up a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one by hand, but just in case I'm going to half hitch just to be sure that it's not going to go flying off on me. And then I'm going to grab this with the hackle pliers and I'm just going to wrap this manually. I'm probably going to try to get two wraps right in front of that eye or right in front of my eyes before I start going back. Just make sure that I'm not trapping a ton. And then I'm going to go around underneath the eyes. Split these two sets of rubber legs out. And make sure that I have them clear on the back side as well. I'm going to get one to two wraps in between those rubber legs. Peel these ones forward, catch a wrap or two right behind them, and I got just enough hackle to complete this fly. 
Alright, now I'm going to take the wire that we tied in before and we're going to counter wrap this. So what I'm going to do is come around on the opposite side, get the opposite, go the opposite direction that you wrapped your hackle. And once you have that first wrap in place, you're nice and secure, you can go ahead and get this out of your way. Just don't let go of the tension on this as you're counter wrapping. Because if you let go of the tension, the whole thing's going to unravel on you. So I just want a good wrap right there. Work in between the rubber legs once again. Right between those rubber legs, I'm going to go one right there right around the eyes and then up to the front just kind of peeling everything back and I'm going to make an extra wrap or two on that front get a few nice clean wraps on that And then I'm just going to trim that section off. Now we'll go ahead with a whip finish here. I didn't like how that one was going. We'll go ahead with a whip finish. Go one, two, three. And the last thing that we're going to do on this is we're going to take our rubber legs oh, I'm going to cut that piece off right there there we go we're going to take these rubber legs now and we're going to cut these to length I'm not cutting them very short at all I'm going to keep them almost entirely the length that they were um, from the package I'm just gonna dust these tips off right there make sure that those things are nice and even you can still you can see that they're all hanging down those ones are still attached a little bit right there get out of there you can see that they're all hanging down nice and nice and flat they're not being pulled one direction or the other from material stressing them they're sitting down nice and they're just sitting right how they were tied on not stressed one way or the other like I was saying and then the last thing that we'll do on this is I'll just clean up some of these fibers that I have right here let me get those out of the way everything looks pretty clean uh, go back to my marker and then I just want to color this up slightly I'm just going to touch my thread up, give it a little tan or brown color to it. That way it's not all messed up with the white sticking out there. And there you have Kelly Gallup's big hole bug. Like I was saying, it's a little bit of an extra step. Let me see if I can turn this a little bit so you can get a better view. There we go. There you have a little bit better of a view. That skirt's a little messed up from probably moving the wire and everything around. We'll give it a good 360 right there. Get those legs to come back down. But there you have it. There's Kelly Gallup's big hole bug. Um, like I said, it was a little bit more, uh, it took a little bit of extra time to counter wrap it with the copper wire and everything, but I really feel that it shores the fly up a little bit more. It makes it a little bit more sturdy, uh, gives you a little bit extra reassurance. Like you, like I said, you go getting a good fish on there, it catches a piece of that uh, saddle and then your, your fly's done. It's gonna unravel and you'll be fishing it without a saddle. But like I said, there's Kelly's big old bug. If you guys have questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. Thanks as always for watching, we'll catch you on the next fly.